everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 7 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, uh, where today, got some plans. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to move out of this hole in a wall that I call a house into a bigger hole in a bigger wall that I'm going to call a house. You know Dyer's not a decorative builder by any stretch, he's a technical player. So, 9 by 9s are going to happen, uh, but I'm going to try to do like I've done in the past, where I'm going to like start with a starter 9 by 9 and then like as we check out some mods, maybe we'll have like some dedicated buildings for like, you know, some magic buildings, some tech buildings, you know, we've got a lot of mods in this pack to like do some cool things with, so I definitely want to make sure to do that. But as you can see, as I come out of my house here, I've terraformed a little bit. Yeah, I cleared out the big hill in front of me and kind of flattened out the terrain and, you know, cleaned things up. I used uh, an exchanging gadget here, which is, you know, a nice way to swap out blocks one for another. So, for example, if I wanted to, like, turn a big area into cobblestone, boom, I could do that. And if I wanted to turn it back into dirt, I could do that as well. And here's the other cool thing. I wasn't sure if this was going to work, but it does. Uh, check this thing out, dudes. Uh, if we take a look at the, the storage gadget here... 1,345 dirt, boom. 1,296 dirt. How cool is that? My exchange gadget and building gadgets work with the pocket storage as well. Another thing that I knew I put in, but like I wrote this mod back in 112 and I haven't done a lot of maintaining of it. Like some other people have been jumping in and helping to maintain it. And so when things still work, I get surprised. I'm like, hey, cool, that feature is still there. That's awesome. <laughs> it just surprises me, that's all. Um, so the plan for today is two things. Number one, I want to move out of this house, right? I'm making some glass for some, you know, traditional 9x9 roofing. Uh, I'm making, you know, a bunch of stone so that we have a bunch of building materials here. And I would like to move into the house. I'd like to get better storage for a bunch of my stuff. And I'd also like to build a sorting system with laser IO. Uh, so Laser IO is a mod that I'm working on. It's not released on CurseForge yet, but it is available in the Direwolf 20 pack exclusively until a public release occurs. Um, it's currently version 0.2.0. It's got some basic functionality, and the goal of this mod is to bring back Ender IO piping. Those of you who've been playing modded Minecraft for a long time may remember Ender IO as being a really cool mod with some really nice piping mechanics. Uh, I want this to be like that and uh you know a lot of people have said to me over the years like hey we really miss ender io like that had like the coolest pipes they were you know and one of the big features was like you could you know connect energy fluids redstone and uh rf uh and, and item transfer all to you know the same side of a block and interact with them so laser io hopes to be a really useful tool for routing items around and i would like to build a sorting system using laser IO for two purposes. One, to help flesh out any bugs that might exist, because like I said, it's an alpha, it's not even released yet. And number two, I want to make sure all the features that I've implemented work the way I want them to, and I'm not missing any features that I need. Currently, the only thing that's implemented is item cards, and the fluid and energy cards are not in yet, and I don't even have a placeholder yet for, RF, for redstone cards. So there will be a lot more features in here. We'll talk about laser IO throughout this episode and, and check out some of the ways it works in the next episode or two as I build a sorting system with it. But the plan is that I would like to, as I mentioned, come back from mining, drop all my stuff into one big chest and have it sort into a bunch of smaller, you know, distributed chests elsewhere. Could we jump into refined storage at some point? Absolutely we will. Uh, but I want to start with like lower tech. I'm not ready to jump into a refined storage system because I don't even have power gen. Like we got to tech up first. So without further ado, let's get a house built, right? I don't think I need an exchanging gadget for the house, but I also made a copy and paste gadget so that I'm ready to do that. So here's my thoughts, right? I would like to start with a simple nine by nine. Okay. And that's cool. And then uh, we're going to go probably, I'm just going to go up one, two, three, four, five ish. And then we're ready to build this, this, this. And then you guys come to me here. And then we can go boom, 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 boom. How great is that? And this is my standard building structure. I've been building this since literally the first, you know, game of Minecraft that I played back before the Nether update came out. <laughs> that's how that's how long I've been playing Minecraft since before the Nether update was a thing. 
Now, hopefully I built this correctly. It's, you know, my standard house, so I hope I, I built it correctly. Generally, I throw torches on the walls. Um, and if you look at F7 here, well, I might not even show it because, uh, you know, there's enough lighting. But generally speaking, um, what would happen is if the, if the, if the, room was built of this size this many torches is enough to light the entire room if you put the torches any you know higher or farther away then you're going to need torches on the floor and that's why i didn't like that now in the new version of minecraft that's not necessarily the case any longer which is fine i get that technically nine by nines don't need to be nine by nine anymore but it wouldn't be it wouldn't feel right to not have a nine by nine like it's it's the, it's the dire thing that we do right am i wrong i feel like it would be i feel like it would be a crime to not build a 9x9, at least once in the series. So we need to. Uh, now the copy and paste gadget is what I'm gonna use next. It's gonna copy and paste an entire area. So I'm gonna start by clicking on one corner here and then clicking on another corner up here and you'll see no dire wire, please. But we can see the, the layout of the area that was selected, okay? And then I can paste that wherever I want. So I can just plop a copy of it, boom, right there. And now we have an exact copy of that entire structure, courtesy of the copy paste gadget. Is that cool? And now I can build myself a lovely little tunnel between the two. How great is that? All right. Um, now, now to proceed even further, I'm going to probably build two more of these. Uh, generally speaking, I, I have in this area, I'd like to have a big long room. So I'm going to start with building two, but then I'm going to, I'm going to clear out the walls here. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. And it looks like we probably, oh, look at that. You put torches where they don't belong. That's kind of funny. I think I can undo that. That's fine. Uh, I think I ran out of stone bricks, obviously. So let's do this. Let's put, um... Let's get some more stone bricks and then we'll be ready for that. Now, are you nice and clear in there? You are, good. So we've got a little bit more glass cooking up for ourselves. A little bit more of that and that looks good, right? And now what I would like to do is try and build that copy paste again of that area. Oh, that's better. That's better. By the way, you can hold uh, shift on the copy paste gadget and it'll tell you if you have enough items. So for example, if I didn't have enough glass here, it would tell me that I don't have enough glass. We're missing 16. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do... Man, that is just too fast, isn't it? I need to put you on in exact mode. If you're if you're trying to do any kind of delicate, you know, building here, exact mode is 100% the way to do it. Cool. And then let's we'll rebuild this little bit that we mined out by mistake. And that looks pretty cool to me. Nice. And then generally speaking, is it here that I usually have this? That looks about right. Fans of this series may recognize this structure as promised, but hey, that's, that's the way we roll, remember? That looks good. All right, now generally speaking, this is kind of like my, you know, my machines slash, you know, functional room where I do like crafting and work and, and making things. Um, this is usually my living quarters where I have like, you know, a standard, you know, crafting table, maybe a basic furnace and, you know, bed, a couple little basic things. And then this is generally where I store a bunch of items. So this is my storage room. So let's talk storage because we're going to need a lot of item storage. Uh, we should also get a door. 
sweet. And we should probably also get a pressure plate because that's also a standard dyer thing. I love having pressure plates on doors. They automatically close behind you. Why wouldn't you want to do that? It's the best thing ever. Uh, and we might want to fancy up the floor a little bit. Um, you know, maybe something nicer. Maybe, maybe wood. Uh, I don't know. Wood could be cool. I guess we could do oak planks, right? I'm sure there's lots of decorative building materials, and I'll look into that. We'll come up with something. But I can use my exchanging gadget to take care of that. So I'll just plop you down. Yeah, you know, I don't generally like oak because it doesn't mine well with a pickaxe. What do we got material? You know what I could use? I have a lot of... I have a lot of cobbled deep slate. Does this stuff look cool? What's deep slate look like? That could be a cool flooring, right? I mean, there's bricked versions of them too. We would have to smelt it up, and I'm kind of actually getting low on, on coal. Um, but deep slate is just, you know, or dictionary. Yeah, I could use cobbled deep slate. I like that plan a little bit. I want to try that real fast. I kind of like the way it looks. Doesn't it look good? I'm going to move my bed because it's time to sleep anyway. I think cobbled deep slate might be a nice flooring. Why not, right? Hey, I'm trying something new. So exchanger, what I'm gonna do is put you on fuzzy mode. You know what I'm gonna do? All right, so that should be cool. I would like you to be a little bit bigger though. I want you to cover the entire area. And again, it's pulling out of my pocket storage unit, so that's kind of neat. Isn't that cool? I'm very happy with that. So nice and center point of the room, which would probably be about there-ish. Yeah, that looks good. And then again, center point-ish. And then again, center point-ish. And let's go with a smaller range to fill in these gaps. Does that look cool? I think that looks nice, right? Doesn't that look good? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think it looks nice. Nice enough. Nicer than a normal dire house. Look, I'm not living on dirt for a change, so let's all celebrate that fact. Because you know that that's normally what happens. Uh, and I think I'm going to throw my extra this stuff in here. Even though that's not really a mining material, but at least I can, like, build with it at some point in the future. Uh, so with that now taken care of, let's start talking inventory storage, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get... How am I for iron? Do I need to do a little bit of mining to get more iron? Because I definitely want more iron resources. Uh, we've got some raw iron here, actually. We're pretty good. And I wouldn't mind some gold as well cooked up. Um, should I? Should I? Should I do this route? Feel like that might not be a bad idea i think because yeah, you get one and a third right like let's not waste it let's be smart about it that's what i'm thinking quick hopper please so this is all nicely neatly cleaned up uh, we will start this accumulating. Now, by the way, if you want, you can redstone control this. If you get, if you put a redstone signal on here, he'll automatically start, you know, extracting. Uh, and we could totally handle that if we wanted to. So what we could do is have another hopper here. And a chest. If I did that, and then gave you a redstone signal by way of a lever that we can turn on and off, he'll pour in an ingot, and then into there it goes. How cool is that? Right? That was neat. So that's a nice little automated way, for now at least, to process some of my basic ores. But I'm going to do a much better automated you know, ore processing system that we're going to do with lasers. But for now, I just need, you know, a few resources. So while that all cooks up, I'll be back in a minute uh, to, to get ready to do some of the... the well, let's... Uh, 
what I can do is start positioning where I want my chests to go. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Do I have an axe of any kind? I should probably make one. Um, do we have osmium from osmium axe? That would probably be enough. That's tin. That's not osmium. I'll just get a set of eight. And because I'm impatient. See, I got time. I got nothing but time. That's not true. I only have a little bit of time. Cool. All right, so let's get ready to move some of these things. Uh, so what I want is my standard layout of storage chests. Okay. So we'll start with this. Boy, that's a lot of junk. Yes, it is. Mm, how should I handle that? Here's what I'm going to do. Cool. And then I can move this relatively easier. Um, so in the first chest is going to go blocks. So I'm going to deposit some of the things that are blocky looking that I don't necessarily need in my inventory right now. So it's like building block material type stuff. Uh, and then the second ch chest is mostly going to be plants and, and plant-like things. So seeds and, and crops and all that. And the reason I want the iron is so I can upgrade it to either sophisticated storage or iron chests. I haven't really decided which one I'm going to use. I don't know that it makes too much of a difference because really all I want is storage. Uh, but sophisticated storage has some neat features, so we'll see. Um, so let me start moving this stuff around. Wait. I'm going to move this stuff off camera. I think you get the gist of what I'm doing. We'll come back in a minute once I've moved most of my chests out of my old house into my new one. There's not a lot to move because half of these chests are empty. Right? Like most of them I've already cleared out. So we'll be back in a minute. Oh, and by the way, not for nothing, but you can totally use carry-on and shift right click to pick up, I assume, most things. I don't know. I don't know if there's a limit or a list of things that are allowed to be picked up and moved in this manner, but you can totally do this. Um, so I already kind of started populating a mod, a, a mob drops chest here, uh, and that's kind of what this is. So I'm just gonna reuse this one in a sec for one of the other chests. So technically, books don't belong in here. Books go in the end. But this is why we need a sorting system. This is why we need a sorting system, folks. And we'll see about what the last one's going to look like. But I just wanted to point out the whole carry-on, because that's definitely a cool way to go. Uh, you should get upgraded. And then you guys can go into that upgraded chest. Now, there's a lot of non-stackables in here, so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do about that, because this is just going to fill up this chest immediately, and that's not ideal. Right? Yeah, absolutely not ideal. But we'll deal with it, don't worry. Cool, right? I like that. FYI, the sophisticated chests don't render super well when you carry on them. I hope it's not going to have a problem when I place it, but we'll find out. We'll see what happens. I have no idea. Yoinks. Okay, good. We're cool. All right. So this is going to basically be my sorting chest, right? We put items in, they're going to get sorted. Let's look at laser IO um, and figure out how that mod works. I mean, I know how it works because I wrote it, but you guys, you know, need to know. So one downside of automating this is you will definitely have a situation where you have a few nuggets worth of, of, a, of a metal in here, and then it gums up the works, which is a bummer. So what I'm going to do is this and that, and then you reset, and you should be able to start pouring out the gold that we processed now. Cool. Seven blocks and three ingots worth. Beautiful. And all that, all that lovely iron. So let's take a look at uh, what I hope is a cool mod the hope at least uh we want to take a look today at laser io uh because uh i i'm excited about it i really am like i think it's going to be really cool i think i'm hoping that it's going to be really useful uh we'll see if that comes true or not 
So I'm just going to grab a couple basic resources that I know I'm going to need. Uh, and I probably forget half the crafting recipes, because to be honest with you, I test this in a world where I'm in, you know, cheat mode all the time. I'm just testing the features. I'm not testing the crafting recipes all that much. But uh, we'll, we'll figure it out together. Don't worry. I'm going to stick this in the corner here. That seems like a nice place to have a crafting window. So laser I.O. Uh, there's a couple components to laser I.O. First off, we're going to need some raw logic chips. We're going to need some gold nuggets, some clay, and some quartz. So I'm going to get, you know, a healthy amount of quartz here. And I'm also going to get my clay, which should be in my pocket storage. I should have a healthy amount of clay. Thank you very much. And uh, I also want, I like to have usually a stack of cobble or something like that to build with. Or you know what else I could have? Maybe I'll go with the stone bricks. That sounds cool. Uh, so raw logic chips and then a little bit of gold. So let me get like, actually, let me get two sets of you. I'm going to want a lot of these logic chips to be prepared. And notice you get four per craft. So I'll start with, well, I only need one more and then I'm cool. So that works for me. And then we need to smelt them up. So the only thing that these guys do is they uh, they, they, they serve uh, one and only one purpose. And that is to, let's see, where do I want the furnace to live? I think I can stick my furnace in here for now. And like I said, we'll probably have better, you know, stuff in a bit. But this will do. The, the, the main purpose of this... Um, Logic chip is all crafting, right? So that's the only thing it's used for. It smelts into a logic chip, and then you can use it to craft all the components of laser IO. The main purpose here being that, like, it's easier to have, like, a main item for crafting with, right? Uh, the next thing we want to make is laser connectors, laser nodes, and a laser wrench. I'm going to say the word laser a lot in this episode, and I'm just realizing how many times I have to say the word laser for this mod. But you get the idea. So the laser wrench is going to be how we uh, manipulate and control the mod. And then uh, the laser connector here is going to be a connection point between laser nodes. And realistically, laser nodes do all the work and laser connectors do um, very little except connect nodes that are farther away. And we'll see what that looks like uh, in just a minute. So let me get a few nodes here and probably a few more connectors. And then we should be good to go. with that stuff cool and then in addition to that we're also going to need do i actually need lapis yet i could use a little bit i'm going to cut down on the amount of lapis i have in my inventory though uh the other thing we're going to need is item cards and item cards are how we transfer items around in the mod so i'm going to get probably this many item cards uh and they don't stack unfortunately sorry but they have way too much uh intelligence to stack at some point i have a, a plan to add like a card holder or something like that so that you you know your inventory doesn't get too full with them i just have to figure out what that's going to look like it's a to do let's just put it that way um and then for now that should be enough to kind of show you guys the basics what i would also like to show you uh if i may let's put away i'm just trying to keep my inventory a little clean here and is this nice and cleaned up good i'm going to put a few extra item cards in there just to have for later and then you guys can this convert back i'm just curious nope no recipe for that not a big deal we'll deal with it now do i need this for filters not really too much all right yeah that should be fine so for filters i'm gonna want some glass and some iron bars easy peasy get me a few filters now luckily these do stack and you get four per craft so filters are not expensive by any stretch and i'm also going to get one or two of the counting filters because uh, those are also a nifty little gadget that I want to show you guys. So I do still need some quartz because I need an observer. I forgot about that. And uh, some cobble wouldn't be awry. Let's get one, two sets of counting filters. Oh, you know what else I want? I definitely want a couple of these as well. Uh, I would like tag filters. All I need is some paper for that. Uh, so I have some paper, luckily. I never did plant my sugar cane, and I very much should. But we'll get to that as well too so a couple pieces of, of paper will get me some tag filters and i'll get to show you guys that as well all right nice so let's talk laser io shall we i'm going to show you guys the basics of how it works in today's episode and then we'll probably spend some time next episode getting it all the way working does that sound like a good idea i hope so because that's kind of what we're gonna do all right so laser io the laser node which is this guy interacts 
uh, on any side with a with an inventory that holds items. So for example, a chest, boom. Uh, to get the node to interact with that item, each side of the node has a three by three grid of spots to put item cards in. Item cards are the only things that can fit in there. That is it, okay? Uh, and you'll notice that I'm currently looking at the north side of the block. If I wanted to change to the up side of the block, I could change with these different tabs. It's just, you know, this is the upside, and then this is the north side, right? So if I wanted to access the upside, I could just use that tab. This is useful for like, maybe there's a block there and it's kind of like hard to get, you know, back there to access that back side. So what I would say is I'd be like, oh, this is the west, so the opposite is the east, boom. And I can access it. And I can, you know, interact with things like that. So uh, to, to, to work with these things, all we need to do is put an item card in here. And then you see a nice little laser connects into the chest. Woohoo! Uh, the item cards are how you control all different things of this mod. So there's insert mode, which will try to put items into the chest, extract mode, which will try to take items out of the chest, and then stocking mode, which will look through all the other chests that it's connected to for items to fit into this chest. So it's a nice way to keep certain items in stock. Um, you know, insert and extract will be your main bread and butter uses, and then, you know, stock will be, you know, every now and then you'll use that for specific reasons. Uh, and then we can filter what goes in and out of chests with different kinds of filters. Uh, filter option one is the uh, basic filter. We can just put items in there. So like, for example, this way, it'll you know allow gold, it'll allow logs, and it'll allow iron in. End of the story, right? Counting filters are a little bit different in that when you open those up, you can hold multiple numbers of items. And this is if you wanna only fill up two numbers of items. So for example, uh, if you wanted only a certain number of things. So the good use of the stocking filter is two things. One, if you if you want only up to a certain amount in an inventory, so like I only want 64 gold to make its way into this inventory, you can put that on the insert. And if you want to keep a certain amount of items stocked, you can also use it in the stocking mode. Um, counting filters don't really matter for extracting mode, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so let's take a look at it, right? So real easy, um, you can connect two nodes directly to each other. So what I can do is just kind of, you know, it doesn't really matter where I put this thing, but I'm just going to pop it right here and then place a chest there. You can link your nodes with the wrench. You just click and then click and you'll notice a little laser between them and now they're connected to each other. The max range on this, by the way, is about eight blocks. So if you try to go further than eight blocks, it's, you know, not going not gonna to work out too well for you. So in order to do that, you need connectors in between them. So the connectors go on the ground and then you can connect to the connector and then you can do this to that, and then you're good. Cool? And if you break it, it disconnects everything. At least it's supposed to. We'll find out. <laughs> so, hey, I'm actually noticing that it's uh, getting a little dark in here. I'm going to I'm gonna add a few more bits of light. You know, I think we have feral flare lanterns in this pack. I should totally make a couple of them. But, uh, so we've got this guy. So let's say we want to take out of this chest and put it into this one, right? Really simply, all we need to do is open up your item card, set it to extract mode, and then put that in here. You can also right click the item card when it's in the UI to, to, to start making changes to it. Now, some of the settings you wanna worry about, um, I'll talk about how all these work. Round Robin's not implemented yet, exact mode, I'll talk about in a minute. There's also channels that we'll talk about. Um, and then this is how many items it transfers per operation. So it defaults to one. We'll take a look at what that means. Um, so on the other side, we just want to have the card in insert mode, which is the default. You can also just right click the card into the side and it'll go right in there. Cool. So now if I placed, for example, stake in here, it's going to start extracting it. Sweet. Uh, now in the settings, you can change how many items transfer per operation. You can bump that all the way up to eight by default. And now it'll transfer eight items at a time. Cool. The, uh, the, the second option here is transfer speed and ticks. This is how long between each operation. So by default, it's 20 ticks, right? Which is once a second. So default mode, the fastest you can get, eight items per second, okay? You can increase ticks, but you can't decrease them unless you put an upgrade into these cards. So I could bump this up to like 30. And if you hit shift, by the way, it'll go up by 10. And if you hit control, by the way, it'll go up by 64. So, you know, if I bump this up to 80 ticks, that's four seconds, and I put the stake in here, it's now only going to transfer eight items every four seconds. So see how it's, you know, a lot slower. There might be a reason you want that. But like I said, you can get it down to as low as 20 without any upgrades in there. Cool. 
Uh, so the other thing we might want to do is put on exact mode. And in that mode, it only transfers out if it has exactly the number of items that we want. So we want it to pull eight items out. It won't pull out less than eight. So see how it stopped? And if I turn exact mode off, it'll go back to extracting and, and pull out the remaining. And it also kind of renders the items as it's... Uh, as it's extracting there. So we can see there, you can kind of see some little particles indicating that it's extracting items. So that one's the, the stone bricks. And then the particles change, that's probably the stake. And then the gold. And they also render on the inserting side as well. And you can also set up multiple channels. Uh, so for example, if we had a, another chest over here and we put down a node, and we connected this node to that one, uh, we could have an insert card and we could change the channel. I can change it up to, there's 15 different channels on these guys. Uh, I'll make it channel one, for example. And you'll notice the color of the laser is now orange to match the channel color. These two are white. Uh, so if I were to, for example, say, hey, extract on the orange channel, notice that the items did not go into this chest, but instead went into that one. So the channels have to match in order for it to, you know, route to those different locations. So you can do all kinds of cool logic with this to, to, to get items routing the appropriate way. And then, like I said, you can also set up filters. So if we wanted to, um, you know, what we could have is uh, we could lower this to channel zero. We could make this one back down to channel zero. Um, we can prioritize. So I can make this one, for example, priority zero. And this one can be priority one. And that means that it'll insert into this chest first. And if it can't go into this chest, it'll start going into this one. Cool. The other uh, thing we might do is filter. So if we wanted to throw, for example, like I said, filters, let's say gold, uh, I want to allow in here, right? Uh, so let's make this one it because this is the priority. So I'm gonna say, hey, filter on gold. And you can add filters here. So like gold and iron, for example. Um, if I were to put gold and iron in here, they should all go into that chest. And then the stake won't be allowed in there because it doesn't match the filter, so the stake will go into the other chest. Pretty neat. So there's a lot more, you know, crazy features we can do. Um, I'm gonna, let's cover them real quick, right? So let's say I wanted to keep, let's say 12 gold or 12 iron in this chest. I'm gonna change out the filter here for this counting filter. So remember, this is the higher priority. So if I threw a bunch of iron in here, it'll get the 12 in there that we need first. Well, it was supposed to. See, this is why we do things. I found a bug. You're supposed to limit that. Oh, well, a bug for me to find. So what it's supposed to happen is it was supposed to only put 12 in there, <laughs> but I just figured out that there's a bug with that. So this is why I'm testing this. This is why we're figuring it out. Uh, but then the final type of tag uh, or filter is the tag filter. So this one's neat. You can put any item in there and it will tell you what tags are on it. So we've got obviously a little bit of overlap here, but that's not a big deal. But if I say forge ingots and I add that to my list, now forge ingots is the tag filter. So any items with that tag on it will be allowed in this chest with a high priority. So for example, I can put, you know, my gold, my iron, and my stakes again, and anything that has the uh, forge ingots tag will make its way to this chest, and anything that doesn't won't. So a lot of different ways to sort and organize things, and that's what we're probably gonna be working on in the next couple episodes. Um, by the way, all the tags and items support resetting based on self-crafting, so I can do that, and it'll reset the filter. So you'll notice like this guy doesn't stack with the stack anymore, that's because he's been modified, but if I reset him, and I reset these, you'll notice that they all stack together now. Pretty cool. All right. So let's play around with this a little bit. Um, there are upgrades, by the way, which I, which I haven't mentioned yet, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And you'll notice you can have multiple cards in a, in a side here. So we can have multiple insert points. You know, they could have different filters. You know, one could be on, you know, different channels, all kinds of different stuff you can do. So for the low, low cost of just a little bit of gold, we can make some card overclockers. And it looks like I'm actually pretty low. Hey, you know what? I got more gold outside. That's right. We were processing that. 
I can get one more card overclocker. Um, so, you know what, I'm actually gonna get two more, okay? Because I wanna demonstrate how these things work. So card overclockers will upgrade the individual cards inside of a node. There's also node overclockers, but these are complicated and I will tell you how they work. They're pretty powerful, but it, there's, I don't, it's gonna, we'll talk about it in the future. So card overclockers, what they do is make the card settings over here be able to be better. So if we bump one card overclocker in there, we can bump our transfer amount up to 16 now from eight. And we can bring our transfer speed of ticks down to 15. So what this means is it'll transfer 16 items every 15 ticks. So it runs more quickly. Um, so let's get our insert card there again. You'll notice it's putting 16 items at a time. So a lot faster, right? Definitely a lot faster. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, with a second card overclocker in there. And overclocker cards really only work or make sense for um, stocking and extracting cards. There's no need to put them in the insert card because inserters don't do anything. They just accept items. Uh, but this we can bump up. And again, shift click to go up by 10 or control click to go up by 64. Brings you up to 32 and 10. So now if I put my stake in there, boom, boom. It ran every half a second. And as you might expect, a third overclocker brings you up to 64 and five. Boom, boom. Or 48 and five, sorry. And then uh, the fourth overclocker brings you up to 64 and one. So this will transfer um, a full stack per tick. Very quick, very quick extraction at that point. Just instantly, basically. Yoinks. Oh good, I didn't lose my MBT. I didn't think that would happen, but you never know. I'm still testing this mod, it's still new. <laughs> uh, so five is the max you can put in there. If you take the cards out while the settings are still set and close the UI, it's going to change it on the back end. So don't think that there's any sneakiness that you can do there. Uh, you can totally shift click your, your card overclockers in here. And again, four is the max that will fit. Uh, and you can, you know, you can make an extractor, you know, operate at whatever speed you want. So if you want it to be, you know, 64 every three seconds, that's fine. We can make that happen. Every three seconds, it'll run and pull out a full stack. You have complete control over the speed and uh, operation of these things. Pretty cool, in my opinion. All right, so I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode. Uh, so you guys have the basics of how this system works, right? Let's come back next episode and learn more. What I'm going to do is use next episode as a good way. Um, oh, by the way, when you craft these and reset them, you'll get back your overclockers. So don't worry about that. The same is true uh, for any filter cards you have in there. So if you have a, a filter and it has, let's say, a blast furnace and redstone and you've got your overclocker cards and you craft this guy, boom, you'll get your overclocker and your counting filter back and it still has the stuff in it. Also, I added a neat little tooltip there that shows you what items are in the filter. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, I made it so like the cards show you what mode they're in. So see how it turns to a red and then it also shows you what channel it's in on the bottom there. So if I make it channel purple. You can kind of see that right on the card. Stocking mode we haven't talked about yet. We'll get there. Don't worry. So let's wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. And uh, the plan will be to build a whole sorting system using this mod. And this will tell me, you know, how my mod's working. Already found one bug, so I got to go fix that. For now, I'll twice sign off. Hope you all enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time for more. Uh, we're going to sort, we're going to organize, and we're going to do a bunch of cool stuff with logistics lasers. No, laser IO. That's what I named this one. All right. For now, take it easy.